For the Quantum Grammar Shoot Podcast, the only podcast of its kind that I'm aware of on the interwebs. I'm your host, Colin Jason I from Matthew Colin Glass. And in this podcast, I will be discussing various topics as viewed through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse syntax grammar, i.e. quantum grammar, the wonderful technology brought to the public in 1988 by Colin David I from Colin Miller, full stop. I had recorded an entire episode, but decided not to post it because of its political content. Meaning, it was just too, I want to say, divisive. And it's not my volition to divide people. Not inherently, anyways. I mean, I'm not saying division is good or bad. I know everybody wants to be feels better if everyone's together on the same page. It definitely feels better that way. I don't really see that ever happening, though, folks. I really don't. Especially the way the mainstream fiction system, and that includes governments, media, military, pharmaceutical, medical, whatever you want to call it, legal, especially since that whole system is based on division. Dividing people, separating people, because they know strength is in numbers. They knew that if actually a group of folks could actually come together, unite with the same volition, how powerful that would be. And that's what happens when governments are overthrown. And so they've done a very good job in dividing everything. Going all the way back to, okay, let's go into recent quote-unquote history because history is just a story. And the farther back it goes, the less reliable it is. But in recent history, the division has been palpable, folks, in North America. And in North America, I include parts of Mexico, United States, past tense United States, and Canada. The program after World War II was pretty, it's pretty amazing how focused the PSYOP program has been in dividing the people. Got everybody together for the war, got everybody on the same page, right? Right? Germans, Japanese, bad. Right? You got your axis of powers. I'm, being, I'm, I'm hesitating because I'm trying to be very careful in how I word these things. So then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, poof, Israel appears. They drop it smack dab in the middle of Palestine. In other words, people... We're already living there, and Israel got dropped on top of those people. Because on no map prior to World War II has Israel ever been a name on a map. There just hasn't been. It's been Palestine. So that happened. All right? And shortly after that happened, uh, Operation or Project Paperclip happened, where they brought all the best and brightest and perhaps most twisted, scientists from Germany over here, and they took the lesser patsies, middlemen, expendables, and they put them in the Nuremberg trials. But the real, you know, the meat of the matter, the the creme de la creme of the German scientists, they brought over here, and they started... uh, a little alphabet organization called the CIA with all kinds of cool little programs, mind control programs, that ideas that they got from the Germans, the scientists. Which, I say German scientists 
as sort of a blanket uh, term, but they weren't necessarily all German. I mean, there's... Well, we won't go into ethnicity. Not going to go there, folks. Not going to go there. I should say that these scientists, multicultural scientists, were brought over here and started developing these programs. Now, you had, after World War II, after Hiroshima, Nagasaki, what we were told happened at those places was unnecessary. The war was over, had already been won, surrender already secured, and yet Hiroshima and Nagasaki happened. Whether it happened the way we were told or not, I'm not one to say I wasn't there. I don't know. I don't know. I know what I've been told about, well, what I was taught early on at an early age about nukes and what they do and how terrible they are. But I can definitely tell you that if you look at pictures of Hiroshima and Nagasaki today, there is really no evidence that any of that ever happened. Plants are growing. It's a thriving place. Same thing with Chernobyl. Same thing with uh, Fukushima. Um, So there is no nuclear wasteland, like we've been told. And I see that that narrative has kind of fallen by the wayside for obvious reasons, I guess. We used to be taught that, that, oh, goodness gracious, the dangers of nuclear war is going to turn everything into Mad Max. You know, everything's going to be a desert. So far, that hasn't happened. Even though, supposedly, these nuclear bombs have been dropped. Keep that in mind, folks. Where was I going with this? Oh, yeah, division, division. So, you got these programs. You got what we call the nuclear family. Nuclear family. Mom and dad and the kids leave it to Beaver, right? Dad goes away to work. Mom's at home, taking care of the kids, bringing up the children, cooking, cleaning. Dad comes home, you got the study with the library and the books and the whiskey, the dry bar or wet bar, whatever, the pipe, the cigars, cocktail parties. People used to dress up in suits and ties in their freaking own house to entertain guests. It was a wonderful time, if you look at it. I mean, if that's the way it really was, that's cool. I I really can buy into that type of nostalgia. I don't know if that's the way it actually was or not. Some folks who lived back then told me it was. Even if you didn't have that much money, you still dressed up. You didn't go to the freaking grocery store in your sweatpants and pajamas and slippers. You got dressed up. When you got on an airplane, you got dressed up, suit and tie, beautiful dresses. Not so much anymore, though, huh? Anyways, that's the nuclear family. They, they developed that. Safety, security. And then they realized, okay, this is creating a cohesiveness. Now, this is my own perception, my own opinion. Now we got to divide them. We've got to separate these people. We have a certain way to do things, so we've got to separate them. What's the first way to do it? All right. Let's bring in feminism. Let's tell the women, the females, that they are equal to the males or should be treated equally to the males. That they don't need to stay home cook and clean, and raise the children that they birthed. No. They can give birth to the children, go out and work, and then a man can stay home and take care of the children. Because physically, the woman is more than capable of taking care of herself out on the street, right? Okay, that's just my own little cheeky pun thrown in there. Take any woman. I don't care who they are. Take any woman. Put her in a 10 by 10 room with a man, same weight, 
same age. And you tell me who comes out alive if, if they're locked in Mortal Kombat. I know who my money would be on. Now, most people would say, well, that's not the point, Jason. The point is we're in a civilized society. We're not supposed to be violent out there. When has that ever been true? When has that ever been proven true? Never. There are still rapes. There are still physical attacks, brutality, perpetrated by men upon women. Who do women turn to for protection? Most likely, men. They're not going to turn to their girlfriend and say, you know, this guy is stalking me. He's trying to get me. Can you help me? Nowhere are they going to think that their female friend, unless that female friend is named Amanda Nunes, is going to help them physically fending off an attacker. No, they're going to go to a guy. This is not sexism. This, these are facts. There's a reason why men are built the way they are and women are built the way they are. We each have our own attributes. There are some attributes that women possess that men cannot even touch. For example, intuition, the intangible thing of uh, the intangible concept of intuition. They have a very good sense, much more than men, of this type of scenario. That's just one thing. Also, making decisions for the good of the household usually comes from the female because they have an innate, built-in, motherly quality just like the male ought to have a built-in protective quality to be able to physically protect your family. If you don't have that within yourself, then this program, you are a member of the statistics of the success rate of the division program perpetrated by the CIA and other government agencies in trying to divide the nuclear family. So now they go into the hippie movement. We have the Vietnam, what they called back then, the Vietnam conflict. They didn't want to call it a war because they were losing. Losing. In the public guy, what was really going on, who knows? I'm sure you can talk to Vietnam vets if they are still living, bless them, and they can tell you what happened over there. Point being, they started an anti-war movement, these hippies. Probably very pure at the beginning, they really meant it. They didn't want war. They wanted peace. The United States had no business being in Vietnam. Right? So, it was co-opted by the government, by CIA, by drugs. So it turned from an anti-war movement, anti-draft movement, into, hey, in the meantime, let's just go have sex with whoever we want to, be promiscuous, bring, you know, homosexuality, same-sex type stuff out into the open, don't take a bath, um, and do drugs. And they brought in copious amounts of LSD, not to mention other drugs as well, but mostly LSD, which is a, what was it called at the beginning? Like the truth serum? They would give it to captives, and supposedly the captives would tell the truth. I don't know. But these, these are things that I've read. And this was all perpetrated by the CIA. By the government. And now you got women out there burning their bras, thinking that they're physically equal to men. That, you know, abortion becomes a thing, right? I'm not even going to... Okay, folks, I know you, you think, well, why isn't he talking about race? I'm not even going to go there. We don't even need to bring that into this for the context of what I'm talking about. 
I'm not saying this is good or bad or anything. What I'm saying, I'm telling you what happened. I'm giving a continuance of the evidence to my statement that division is what makes society weak and why no one can stand up. And I'm giving you a continuance of the evidence of how this happened. If you really take a look at it. So this happened through music. Festivals, that whole thing. Free love. If you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. Promiscuity. This was all perpetrated. This was all fiction system perpetrated. Now that's not to take the onus of accountability off of the general public because the general public are perfectly capable of making their own decisions. You can't go out, be promiscuous, catch an STD and then die from it, and then blame it on the government. You made those choices. It's kind of like, to me, it's kind of like the leftist liberal argument about abortion where a lot of people are talking about they're going to vote for Harris because they have... I've seen a lot of fathers say this. A lot of fathers say this. That they're going to vote for Kamala Harris because they're concerned about the future for their daughters. That their daughters need to have the right to make decisions, decisions about their own bodies. Meaning... The choice for abortion needs to be there. And this brings to mind, you know, okay, I understand that. Your body, your choice. I'm behind that 100%. It is your choice because it's your body that's carrying the baby. I understand that. But let's let's go back a little bit. Let's play the tape the whole way through, Dad. Your daughter has control over her body to the point where she can choose whether to have promiscuous sex or not. It's her choice. If she chooses not to have sex, or if she chooses to have unprotected sex or not use birth control, then she's opened herself up to becoming pregnant. That's her choice. So basically what you're saying when you're talking about abortion rights, you're talking about, I want my daughters to have the right to have sex with no consequences. Which, that's a jip to me. That's utterly ridiculous. How about your daughters don't have promiscuous sex? How about your daughters grow up with morals and values and if they choose to have sex have safe sex where they're not going to get pregnant and they're not going to bring that issue up at all they don't even need to consider anything like abortion as horrible as abortion as traumatizing as abortion I mean you're talking about proof of life on Mars is moisture But proof of life in a woman's belly, that is not proof of life. A fetus is not proof of life. Uh, uh, This this doesn't line up, folks. Again, I'm fully behind woman, the female, having the choice to do what she wants to with her body and what's in her body. But I'm also about knowledge cultivation. Know what it is you're doing before you do it. Choose wisely. Contract is by consent. Yes, of course, there are situations that happen without consent. No contract situations. Horribly violent situations that happen. There are those too. And what I'm saying to you folks is, I'm talking about the ones that are capable of giving consent making choices. That's what I'm talking about. The vast majority of these cases are consensual. 
Anyways, <laughs> so this is creating a division in society. Massive division. And it's all according to plan. Left-right paradigm. You have a left hand, you have a right hand. Guess what? They're both connected to the same head, the same brain, the same formatory apparatus. I'll bet you dollars to donuts that in the overall scheme of things, things are just going to continue the way they've been continuing. And there's going to be no perceptible long-term change. Has life gotten better for you in the last four years? If it has, then I can understand why you'd want to vote for Kamala Harris. Was life better for you when Trump was in office? Well, then I can see why you'd want to vote for Trump. Was life better for you 10 years ago? 20 years ago? Is life better now than it was 50 years ago? A year ago, I'll bet you that if you're going to answer truthfully, you're going to say that life has indeed not gotten better overall. It just continues to get worse. Working more hours, having more difficulty getting jobs, benefits, cost of living going up, groceries out of the, you know, skyrocketing, the scam known as, as insurance, just totally siphoning money from people, everything, convenience fees, quote unquote convenience fees, all these different things. Are they making life better for you? Are they giving you more time to be with your family or do whatever you want to do? Are they giving you more vacation time? Do you have more time to yourself to meditate, to have fun, to be healthy? Are the grocery stores giving you affordable, healthy food choices? Are the ingredients in the foods healthy and affordable? If they have a health food section in a grocery store, what does that make the rest of the store? Unhealthy? So you see what I'm going, where I'm going with this? It's my perception that it does not matter who is in office Nothing is going to change. It's just going to continue down the same trajectory as it always has. And people are just going to get more and more divided. Now, what, are, what is the end result here? And this is pure speculation. I know people are talking about, oh, it's going to be a civil war. Violence is going to erupt. That, that's a good possibility. It is a good possibility. I don't care what organization you look at whether it's the military, the police, the politicians, the doctors, the insurance agents, the lawyers. It doesn't matter who you're looking at. There is corruption at every turn, in every district, in every sector. Corruption is happening as we speak right now. And if you have folks in your family that are involved in these professions and they go to work every day, you can bet your ass that they're aware of it. Are they a part of it? Who knows? I would like to think that the majority of good-natured folks keep their heads down, try not to look around at the, at the corruption that's going on around them because they just want to bring home a paycheck and uh, be comfortable and happy with their families. And then the folks that uh, do participate with this uh, corruption maybe see it as a shortcut in what they have to do because they feel that the way things are in society, you have to do some underhanded things to get ahead so that your family can have nice things. It's, it's the age-old dilemma of when you're in the hood and you either have a choice of working at a fast food restaurant for minimum wage or making a few thousand dollars a week selling drugs. What are you going to do? That is a choice, folks. There is a choice. 
It's just one takes a lot more work and a lot more innovation and critical thinking than the other. And actually, one is a losing trajectory as opposed to the other one. I'll leave it up to you to decide which one. So this was my amended version of this podcast. Hopefully not too political, but hopefully enough to open your eyes to, to the purposeful division that has been perpetrated upon society by the fiction system, all aspects of the fiction system. So what's the solution? Well, some could say that the obvious solution is to unite, but I'm not going to suggest that, folks. Definitely not, because I've seen with my own two eyes that this does not work. Now, the solution I suggest is for you. One individual listening to this right now in your own head, you can learn a technology like correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. You can learn how to be autonomous for yourself, how to extricate yourself from the yoke of the fiction system, learn how to be a steward of your own contracts, and in turn, spread that around to the people immediately within your biosphere, get them on board, and then they can start doing it and learning. And then it exponentially spreads to other folks who then can themselves individually learn the grammar and the mechanics. And then exponentially, organically, it will spread. Okay? There's no forcing. It's all by choice. But it's only going to be done by people who are not afraid of hard work and not afraid of doing what it takes, investing in something that they get something out of. Because what you put in is what you get out. Rule one, rule equal. If you're not willing to invest anything in it, then you're not going to get anything out of it. And it's not going to work for you. It's that simple. I'm very 100% confident in saying that after seven plus years of doing this. 100% confident in saying that. If you're not willing to put something into it, you're not going to get anything out of it. Que sera, sera. Thank you for listening.